Hi, Moo. Hi, Daddy. Today I'm going to read you something I wrote years ago here in Maine called Vacation Week. Last week was Vacation Week here in Maine. If you are picturing me lounging in the sun, fruity drink in hand, keep dreaming. The only downtime I got was Sunday between the hours of 1230 and 2 p.m. I didn't see a single fruity drink the whole week unless you count the orange juice I had to wipe off the windows when the kids missed the sink. The one highlight? My husband also took the week off. Normally, this would have rocked beyond belief, but since we are living the dream of 250-year-old homeownership, vacation week was hell. Highlights of hell included cleaning out the basement. Normally, I wouldn't complain, a little tidying here and there, but our basement was so congested, we had to rent a jumbo-sized construction dumpster. It arrived Friday afternoon and looked like this. Let the vacation begin. Our super duper old house had some super duper old wood in the basement, as you can see here. All that construction debris from upstairs had to be stowed somewhere. Unfortunately, the recent rains which flooded our basement also waterlogged much of the discarded material, causing it to mold as well as rendering it ungodly heavy. The rodent excrement peppering much of it was just a bonus. It took us four days to haul everything outside to the dumpster, and if the back-breaking labor wasn't memorable enough, its af aftermath was truly unforgettable, likely because of something I breathed in or touched or otherwise ingested while hauling out all of that crap. I spent two nights splayed across the bathroom floor longing for death. There is something about a severe GI upset that scars a person. Twice in three days is enough to induce psychosis. Ah, vacation week. In between the wood hauling, full body chills, and bathroom trips, we enjoyed nature. And we didn't even have to leave the house. When you are living the dream like we are, you discover all sorts of things you never knew you had. Like red squirrels. Woo! Yes, he or she is very cute. <laughs> My older daughter was beside herself with worry and desire, both to save and keep the squirrel. I am wild about animals, but frankly, I draw the line at eyedropper feeding an infant squirrel 10 times a day for the next who knows how long. After two days of trying unsuccessfully to reunite baby with mama, we took him or her to the nat nature refuge. So, where was that squirrel hiding? Well, you remember all that wood in the photo I showed you? Well, it's really hard to see, but there in the back, you can faintly make out some wood paneling and shelves. These walls and shelves were put up by the former owner who had hoped to use the basement as a workshop before realizing how high the water table is. Back before we bought the house, our home inspector urged us to remove as much of this stuff as possible. 50 years of flooding hasn't been good to this wood. These walls and units were serving no other purpose than to one, hold water, two, mold, three, conceal stuff. Stuff like the squirrels who had been living behind them, as well as a lot of chewed up batting, poop, and potential structural issues, which thankfully we'll now be able to see before they wreck havoc. Here's the space with the beautiful brick archway exposed. You recognize that. <laughs> but the nature discovery didn't end there. Oh no, with all that work we'd been doing inside, we hadn't noticed just what a beating the outside had been taking. When we moved in eight months ago, we had a green lawn. Over the winter, the green naturally turned brown. But as spring has sprung, much of the grass, mostly out back, has regained its verdant look. But the lawn out front? <gasps> About a month ago, these strange brown patches started appearing. Subtle at first, now downright ugly. <laughs> Initially, the dead grass fit the pattern of being urine burned along the edge of the sidewalk where dogs do their business. Or, as one neighbor helpfully suggested, it could have been salt burned from the snow plowing. 
Initially, this made sense until these brown patches began to grow, moving up from the sidewalk to the upper part of the front yard. My husband and I wondered whether it could still be dogs. But our neighbors are courteous and we had such a mild winter. Surely, neither explanation could account for this and no other yard seemed touch. The dead zones kept spreading and our concern grew. I went out late last week to investigate. I brought along a heavy metal rake and began first by poking, then by scraping the surface of the ground. The, dead, the brown dead areas came off effortlessly and just below the surface, to my horror, I found... <sighs> grubs. Ah! White grubs, dozens and dozens of them. I spent some time removing the dead zones, which of course just so happened to be directly in front of our house, <laughs> facing the street where everyone can gaze upon them. Neighbors, passing cars. Oh, yeah. It's hard to see in this picture, but it's all dead. Yes, it is ugly. Having had, ha, having had a mere postage stamp of a yard in Philly, we had no freaking clue. How could we have possibly hedged against a nemesis we didn't even know existed? And so we got to work. Once again, vacation week. We spent time researching online, investigating natural and chemical pesticides, trying to determine the best course of action. I wish I could tell you we did it the happy holding hands way, but this time it was us or the grubs. We decided to take the dirty root and poison them using grub -X. I did not want to do it, but damn it, we've invested everything we have and more in this house and I will not let some white grody grubs take my beautiful lawn away. Oh no. Our next door neighbor led, lent to us her spreader and we put that grub -X down on every inch. Two days of work and the lawn's still ugly as sin, but hopefully it's on its way to health. Time will tell. The icing on vacation week came at the least expected time. I went into the bathroom to relieve myself and was greeted with this. Yes. <laughs> That's a dead mouse in the toilet. <laughs> No droppings in the lived-in portion of the house. No sign of them at all. Then, bam, a dead one in the toilet. When the mice are jumping ship, is that a sign? Sigh. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> Love you guys. I hope that made you laugh. It made me laugh. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.